Good morning, it's Jeremy. It's Wednesday, October the 11th, and today I'm looking at AM modulation. I'm using the uh, Pluto SDR, and what I'm doing here is I'm um, sending a signal through a 40 dB pad on an SMA cable to the uh, RT-LSDR, and um, in the experiment I've used three receivers. I started off uh, feeding the spectrum analyzer, and I used the spectrum analyzer to measure the frequency accuracy of the Pluto. I found it was off a fair amount, so I had to put in a frequency shift component, about, I think it was six kilohertz, and then I fed um, the SDR, and then I looped it back on itself. I find the loop back is quite stressful on the module because you're transmitting with a fair amount of power, even with a pad, receiving on the same frequency at the same time, you're gonna get a lot of intermod. But we'll see that in Camtasia in a minute. Uh, there's the schematic, the GNU radio schematic that I'm using. Um, to feed the uh, Pluto STR and then uh, right now I'm receiving on SDR sharp so you can see the carrier there I'm transmitting on the ISM band uh, through the cable so it's not going onto the air so it's 433.92 megahertz and I've got an information component of 100 kilohertz so you can see the upper side band here at a plus 100 kilohertz and the lower side band at a minus uh, 100 kilohertz so I'm going to switch over to Camtasia and what we're going to do is we're going to loop this back on itself and we'll see how it works uh, that way. So here we're looking at uh, simple AM modulation. I'm not using the Pluto in this particular case. I'm just illustrating the modulation. So we're, there we have our information source, which is a sine wave at one kilohertz. And what I'm doing is all of this will give me um, the AM signal. So this is my carrier at 10K. So I'm adding um, my information source to one. So the amplitude of a carrier wave is one plus M times the information signal. And um, I'm multiplying the information signal by what we call uh, the um, modulation index. So it can be anywhere from zero to one. So let's say 0.5 would be 50% modulation, one would be full modulation. And then what I'm doing is this maximum value, all of this, when the sign is at plus one, let's say I have 100% modulation. When the sign is at, plus, uh, at one, you have one plus one is two. So the, this signal here, the amplitude goes from plus two to minus two. So then I'm um, normalizing it to plus one to minus one. That's what this is. Uh, and then I'm feeding into a time sink. So let's uh, test this out and just see what it looks like. Right now I've set it for 100% modulation. <clears throat> so let's, uh, so you can see that, I'll stop this, you can see that this waveform here is the information signal and in there is the carrier wave. At 100% modulation it just pinches off here. If you go any more than that then you're gonna cause distortion. And down here is the spectrum, so there's the carrier at 10k, that's 11k, and that's 9k. So the upper side band is the information frequency above the carrier, and the lower side band is that below. Let's go to 50% modulation. So I'm going to set this for 0 0.5. <clears throat> okay, so we'll do that again. Space that out a little bit. So now you can see we're only 50% um, modulation, so we're not pinching off here. And um, incidentally, um, there's a carrier in the upper and lower sidebands. The level of the uh, upper and lower sidebands compared to the carrier, at 100% modulation, it's about 6 dB down. And at 50% modulation, it's about 12 dB. So let's say that's around, that's around minus 20. And that's around minus 32, so that's about 12 dB down. Okay, so that's the first schematic. Now let's look at the uh, complete modulator. Now this is a modulator with the Pluto STR. So instead of a generator for the carrier, I'm feeding into the, uh, the Pluto sink here. So all of this is basically what we had before um, without the extra signal source for the carrier, because now the Pluto sink is going to be the carrier. Note that the Pluto sync requires a complex input. So I've got a float to complex converter here, and I'm just going to call the imaginary component zero. So everything is real here, and then the imaginary component is zero, because I need a, a complex to feed there. 
So that goes out into the 40 dB pad in the cable and it comes in here on the receiver. Um, I'm transmitting on the ISM band at 433.92. Now, using the spectrum analyzer, I found that the uh, Pluto was off frequency, so I had to add a shift of 6K. I've got a modulation index for 500. I've also found that feeding in a loopback is kind of unstable. You got a fair amount of intermod, so got to make sure your gains are low. And I've offset the receiver, so I'm receiving at 433.72. So you'll see the signal 200 kilohertz above, because when, you, when you're when you on the same frequency, you've got IQ imbalance and zero problems. So um, I found that was the only way to get this thing to work in loopback. So let's try this. Okay, so those are my components on the transmit end. And I'll crank this gain up here. So there we see the receive end. I don't want to raise this up too much because you get a lot of intermod. So there's the carrier here, but it's 200K. Um, I'm receiving the center frequency is 433.72 because uh, I don't want this to be right on the zero frequency. I want to receive it up. So there's the 433.92, and I can crank up the gain a little bit more um, so you can see it clearly. When I received on the same frequency, I've got all, I got all sorts of intermod. You'll see that. So it doesn't work so well in loopback. But anyways, uh, when you offset it, it seems to work okay.